Uh, this particular brown ale from um, Quarry Brewing Company, fantastic. This is this is uh, really tasty. It's got um, didn't have much of a head, but I'm, I'm guessing uh, that's because I bought a growler of it. And uh, well, you know how it goes with the growler sometimes. But uh, real dark. I mean, I don't know if you can see that stuff looks like motor oil, but it's not. Uh, you know, it's really light bodied for the fact that it's it's a darker you know um, darker malt. A little hoppier. It's got some. Uh, it's got some hops that dance on your tongue a bit. Um, that are a little stronger than your normal English brown ale. Uh, again, indicative of the U.S. style. Um, the other thing I, I like about brown ales that I was going to mention is that brown ales are fantastic with food. Uh, part of the reason that they're good with food is that they're they tend to be a little lower alcohol. Um, and as such, that, that lends itself a little bit to eating food. Um, you know, alcohol uh, can do a couple things. Sometimes it, uh, you know, if you're eating spicy food, it can increase the, the heat from the, from the spice. Uh, brown ales don't tend to do that. You can, you can drink brown ales with spicy food. They actually go very well with spicy food. I found something really cool at the store the other day. I found a Petrus Old Bruin style of beer from Belgium. It's actually a Belgian brown ale that was conditioned in an oak cask for like 20 months or something like that. Let me get the bottle. We'll show you. It has a slightly, a um, little bit of a sour characteristic to it, but also uh, I think you get some of that oak characteristic uh, that you find in, in certain wines. Um, fantastic with food. Uh, grilled up some chicken and some grilled vegetables and a little bit of uh, grilled garlic bread tonight and this this had to be one of the best matches with uh, with the chicken you know the the oakiness really kind of played with that smokiness in the chicken fantastic stuff if you get a chance to try some of the brown ales out there today I'd recommend it uh, if you've stayed away from it because like me you're not the biggest fan of the style uh, go back and give some a try uh, not every variation is going to be your favorite but uh, you know you find some things out there like uh, dogfish heads uh, India brown ale that's a interesting sort of experiment between two styles uh, a hoppy you know IPA and a and a sort of a real malt based uh, brown ale that they sort of come together and yeah, it's, it's an interesting play on the style uh, some interesting things about uh, brown ales they were uh, really about until some of three three hundred years ago, they were uh, basically a kind of a, a dark and murky and often, you know, fermented with wild yeasts. Uh, pretty dubious style of beer. Brown ales were actually uh, once single malt ales um, brewed with a specific malt from England, and uh, they they retained their style much through using that single malt. Uh, Nut Browns found their way to America uh, from home brewers who tried to copy the style of, of English beers, but uh, early on didn't have, you know, all the, the stuff they have nowadays to brew with, uh, you know, like the ability to treat the water to get it exactly the same as, as you know, a, a London's water, for instance. So actually, American home brewers would... Uh, brew the same style of beer, but they'd often use uh, a different hop profile. Uh, instead of having the real specific yeast characteristics that a lot of English beers had, um, because Americans, for the most part, use pretty neutral yeasts, they actually ended up with, oh, you know, nothing that was really stand out in that yeast profile. So they, they hopped them up, and, uh, you know, Cascade hops were pretty prevalent. Now, again, this is not a hoppy beer. This is a beer that you know, pretty much anybody can enjoy. Uh, it's, you know, kind of just, just under a porter, you know, not, not quite that richness of a porter, a little lighter body in, in essence. Brown ales today are, are really um, a lot more exciting than they used to be. Uh, and that's, that's a personal opinion for sure. But uh, I, I don't care for the style all that much. 
But I'm finding that now as I'm going around from brewery to brewery and tasting some of their newest versions of their brown ales, uh, you got some pretty pretty interesting stuff. People are trying different recipes, playing around with it a little bit. Some of the some of the British brands that you're probably more familiar with are Samuel Smith's Nut Brown Ale, uh, Newcastle Brown. Uh, you might have seen Cobb Nut Brown Ale. Uh, the Mash House Nut Brown Ale uh, is actually an American uh, brew from Fayetteville, North Carolina, and uh, it it's won several awards. Um, you've got uh, beers from. Well, a lot of them. Uh, one that you might be familiar with too is uh, Downtown Brown from Lost Coast Brewing Company. That's a fairly uh, well-established, good American-style brown um, that you could try. Oh, do have something to show you though. I uh, got a package uh, actually from a friend of mine who's a food writer at the newspaper I work at. She uh, was sent a. Uh, I used to get sent beer all the time when I was uh, not in Montana, and. Uh, she actually got sent some beer to try, and since she's a wine connoisseur and very knowledgeable about wine, uh, she brought it over to me and said, hey, would you like to try it out, review it? And so uh, being that uh, my, uh, brown ales are sort of in the vein of you know, fall seasonal, maybe. I mean, I know we have them all year round and stuff, but if I'm going to drink a brown ale, it's going to be this time of year. It's that crossover beer. I'm not quite ready for stouts. I'm not ready for the heavy, uh, heavy stuff yet, but... Uh, you know, I want something with some, you know, color to it because it's, well, there's color in the trees out there. So uh, in the vein of this being, you know, maybe a seasonal fall style, uh, I was sent some fall beer to review. Let me show it to you. So it came in a nice little box just like this uh, with a description. It is... Red Hooks, Late Harvest Autumn Ale. And uh, I used to get quite a bit of beer from Red Hook. Uh, good brewery uh, out of Washington State. And this is, this is what it looked like. Let's just uh, cut this little rope here. Now look at that. Decorations any beer blogger would love, right? And you got you got leaves. You got leaves that look like that. And uh, whatever this stuff is, I'm not sure. It's like it's supposed to be. Well, I guess it's supposed to be you know whatever it is. The colors of fall and stuff. They go to a lot of work to you know make this stuff fancy. I mean, I I gotta say it bothers me a little bit when the packaging is is uh, so. So fancy. Maybe if they would have sent it directly to me, they might not have uh, packaged it up so much. I remember getting cookies from breweries before. That was fun. Late harvest, uh, autumn ale. Uh, it should be kind of interesting to try. With a roasted malt aroma, this chestnut colored brew will warm up any chilly evening. Distinct flavors cater to the craft beer lover with two varieties of hops and four carefully selected grains. Great for toasting the season alongside a grilled burger or other tailgate cuisine. Late Harvest is available in 12-ounce bottles and on draft nationwide. Uh, I'm going to put this in the fridge right now, and uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll get to it in this podcast. Probably not, uh, as I'm still working on my Quarry Brewing Brown Ale, which I think is almost gone. We'll put this in the fridge. We'll let that chill a little bit, and uh, we'll get back to it. Uh, Y'all have a great night. Thanks for listening, and uh, we'll see you next time.